Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, basically shaping the magnetic field around a drive coil or an electromagnetic coil. Kind of same difference. So, I've done some printouts on this to make uh, life a little bit easier and uh, um, to speed things up in the video. Hopefully, this one won't take a couple of hours. Now, standard coil, the way that most people do them. This is for things like pulse motors, you know, bedinis and whatnot. Now, most people literally have the cross-sectional area of the coil is pretty much rectangular. So you've got the core in the center, you've got all the windings, yada, yada, yada. So, what does the field look like? Uh, well, let's start off and build it up as we go along. Try and do a reasonably neat job. First, sort of inner um, field line, gus line, whatever you want to call it. Second one kind of flattens out the corners of it. Darn it flattens out the corners a bit and then kind of makes it more sort of round and flares it out so you get a sort of you don't get a linear progression in the middle of the coil like that it's more logarithmic right obviously here it tries to uh, tightly pack around your windings because your windings produce a field, well, if we assume that that end is north, right, then it produces a field going that way, through the centre of the core. And conversely, um, in the opposite direction as well, but we'll come to that later. So, Around the turns, as you're looking at it through a cross-sectional area, you get the field, if it's a single wire, then it just spins around the wire. But because you're tightly packing these wires together, the field expands to encompass all the wires to the outer edge of the wires, if that makes sense. So from this if I then kind of draw in the other side as well it looks a bit like that and where have you seen that before for those of us that uh, are into Star Trek, you'll notice that that's actually the uh, the shape of the uh, warp field. I wonder where they copied that idea from in the uh, to make the movie. Yeah, they copied it from Magnetic Diagram because it looks cool. And it also looks like uh, Wesley's warp bubble as well. Mm. Yeah, looks like Wesley's warp bubble. Hmm. They like to copy things, those guys do. But, uh, <laughs> being a Trekkie aside, um, you might want to do a search for Wesley's Warp Bubble because that, um, because they show the Warp Bubble in three dimensional view, and that's a very good um, diagram of how this field's of the magnetic field forms around a three-dimensional object such as a coil so being a trekkie aside go take a look um, I don't know what the episode is it's one of the um, the next generation episodes um, is it called losing my friends or something or friends something like that off the top of my head. It's been a while since I've uh, 
uh, seen any of the next generation stuff. Anyway, so standard core, and you get this kind of um, um, rounded effect, which no matter what you're going to do, you're always going to get some rounding of the field. You're never going to get a corner in the field. It'll always be rounded corners or um, great big um, ellipses, stuff like that. So, what happens... Yep, yeah, I know the diagram. What happens if you extend the core slightly beyond the the winds that you get uh, the winds that you've got on the core well this is where things get very interesting you still get the tight one that goes around all the all the windings but you then get the next one which kind of does that next one that flares out a bit more and then we run out of paper I'll just do them for illustrative purposes you can connect the dots later okay so what you get is a wider field in the terms of from the central axis of your drive coil the field is wider which might not be what you want to produce okay so if we have a look at the two of them yes it is on the same page for a good reason that's got to uh, comes out the ends a little bit more. And if I draw some more lines on for illustrative purposes, you kind of get that. Mm, probably not the best drawing, but never mind. Whereas this one is more to the side. Now, let's extend the core a bit more. Shall we see it? Way, 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 way beyond. So what you get, you still get your packed line around there. It's not exactly rectangular, but it's done. It follows the curves of your, um, uh, of your wire that you're using. And then the next one kind of does this. So on and so forth. You get the idea. It's flatter and it's wider. So. From those two. You can see. If we go and do, uh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to get them both on. And actually, that end is probably the better end. This is basically a flat bubble like that. If you extend your centre core too far out of it, you will get extremely weak field at the end which is well which can be completely useless so what happens if your core is not symmetrical all of these is symmetrical each end is exactly the same what happens if your core is not symmetrical like that mm mirror image on my screen, typical. Let's say this is the north end. 
those people that have been paying attention to my earlier videos from several years ago will realise that I was running a core exactly in this configuration where the core of my coils, my drive coils, stuck out the back side of it. What does it do? Well, you get hybrid effect, for want of a better way of putting it. Uh, right. You'll always get that very tight pack of um, uh, the field lines going around, as always. But you get a shaping that happens. Uh, hopefully that uh, illustrates it. Okay, hopefully people can uh, can see the shape. Oops, that one went really wrong. Let me draw this out properly. One of the good things about using pencil. I don't know if you can see it there. Uh, not too brilliant. What you essentially get uh, is kind of I'll just illustrate it like this. You kind of get a wedge effect because magnetic field will pull around and it will densely pack close to the, the coils but it doesn't like being like that. So where you've got limited space here you get a very close pack of the field. But at the tail end, where you've got plenty of core sticking out, it has room to expand. So you get a wedge effect from your drive coils. Doesn't always work like that. Um, different drive coils and cores will do slightly different effects in the terms of um, the shape in the magnetic field. Now, the biggest limiting factor of this shape, you will need a point on it, but if you took out, if you angled your turns also like that, so you chopped these corners off, the field lines will follow your turns more closely and you'll get a sharper rounded point <laughs> yeah I know how that sounds it's not a point it will always be curved but it'll be sharper closer to being a point which can be a good thing depending on what your rotor is doing what you want it to do so Is there another way you can shape that field? Is there some other method that you can use, that you can employ to shape the field produced by your drive coils? The answer is yes. Everybody has a core that is basically a bar. With the exception of Mr. Angus Wangus who likes to have um, uh, horseshoes all over the place. I guess he's, uh, uh, I guess he's into gambling because, uh, well, the only reason why you'd have horseshoes is for luck. I'm kidding, by the way. So, 
Is there a way to shape core? Yes, by not having a straight core. Well, that's kind of not accurate. Let me show you. And those that have also followed my videos from several years ago will also note that at several points I did in fact have a plate at the back of my drive coils. So essentially your core is a T. Let's take a look at the flux line shall we? Well on this particular diagram I've stuck the nose out a touch. Um, you kind of do need it out a little bit. Uh, practical experiments have confirmed that a slight protrusion of the core makes for better drive. Again, this depends on how you've wound your coils, what your setup is, what magnets you're using, and about a billion other values. Um, so, experiment. Make a core that is, um, if you're using a standard size spool, say uh, 20 mil bigger than the actual spool. Right? But make your core so you can slide it forwards and back. Again, I've done that myself. So, you set up your drive coil and then you move in and out. Right? By doing so, you adjust the shape of your field and you will get some interesting results. Try it. Don't take my word for it. Try it. Prove it for yourself. Okay, so shape, shaped cores, right, you always get, as I keep saying, the flux line that closely follows your uh, windings, which in this case just, you, know, you can't see that. And yes, I did sharpen my pencil. No, that's better, you can see it a bit more. Move it a bit closer. Right. So it goes to the plate at the back and then conducts back round. Okay, it always conducts through the core. It tries, as I keep saying to you, the cores, the magnetic cores, um, the magnetic field basically can be a rough figure about 100 times denser through a magnetic medium such as iron than it can through the air. A uh, rough figure. I'm just throwing that one out for illustration purposes. So don't quote me on that. So it will always head, head rather, um, straight for a magnetically conductive material. If that material is not quite following the line that it, of the direct line from north to south and south to north, it will still follow it. So even if it's at like a 45 degree, it'll still follow it. Because it can conduct through the magnetically conductive material better than it can through air. So, the back side will pull it round. So what you end up with, again, is again, for illustrative purposes, Looks a bit more pointed, does it not? If we point it, I'll give you a slightly better idea of the shape. That's what you get again. 
you get a little bit better point in Imaz where your rotor would be which is exactly what you may want to use on your rotor now it all depends on what you want to do with your rotor um, most beginners that enter the FE community um, are quite happy to build say a Bedini and quite happy to charge batteries and they think it's wonderful and yep yeah, fine this these set of videos are not for those people those people that want to use a pulse motor to drive a wheel to do a bit of work whether it's a generator a fan whatever uh, may want to experiment with altering the shape of their field because some shapes some geometries will give you more torque for the same amount of power so don't just wind standard cylindrical coils don't just pack them with standard um, cores um, that everyone else uses have a think about the magnetic field hopefully that will inspire people to start thinking about how they can change their pulse motor to do other things I will place um, on this video um, some links to other YouTube videos. Uh, how can I put it? I've got, I think it's four or five at the moment that I've found. Not strictly relevant to magnetic fields, but they contain a lot of information on calculating fields. Um, etc etc basically they go quite heavily into magnetic fields sort of um, degree level um, but it's time to start exposing you to that level of calculations and whatnot but most of this uh, which is the entire point of the intermediate level videos most of this you can just try by adding a bit on without doing any math which is always a good thing so you can experiment play around this this type of core works for this coil that I've done but if I try that coil over there on the same uh, core it doesn't work so you can do that type of experimenting uh, without going into um, headache level maths and the type of maths where you need huge spreadsheets for so hopefully people will find this useful if you like my videos please give me a thumbs up that would be wonderful um, should also point out if anyone's still watching the video uh, this is video 100 for me. Reached the century mark. Well, strictly speaking, I reached the century mark about five videos ago. Um, I had four or five videos removed from YouTube about. It was about four years ago. Um, uh, apparently, it was uh, copyright infringement. But the videos were on. were instructional videos on um, uh, understanding transistors. So how the hell I infringe someone's copyright, I have no frigging clue. But, there we go. Apparently someone complained about them. Walkie. Anyway. Uh, have fun. Experiment. Try it out for yourselves. Um, take note of your uh, experiments and what results you get. Remember, when you are... Um, when you're doing these experiments, 
change one thing at a time and only one thing. That way you can correlate the results between the things that you've changed. So for example, you build your standard coil and then you try it first of all with a bog standard core and you record the results. You then try it with a second core that's a little bit longer, records. Then try it again, third core, a little bit longer still, record the results. And when you're happy with that, let's say you want to try it with a T on the back, you then stand it, then keep the centre core the same and extend, put the T on at the back, and extend it a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And every time you do a little bit, you record the results. And add a little bit more, record the results. Step by step analysis. One thing changing at a time. Then when you've got all these results, you've got results coming out of your ears, you can then take a look and say, right, this change was a good change. Right, so on the next core, I'm going to make that change to it. But this change was bad, so I'm not going to do that one. And this change also produced better results, so I'm going to add that one as well. And that's how you get excellent cores without doing headache level maths. Hopefully, these videos um, will be useful to people. Hopefully, they'll start looking at their setups and start imagining how they can improve them on their own. So, as always, feel free to drop me mail, comments, feel free, as always. Thumbs up if you um, If you don't like it, you can give me a thumbs down. Um, but if you don't like it, tell me what you don't like, and uh, I'll see what I can do about it. Okay, talk to you later.